Hello everyone. So in the last video, we talked about how to get your project up and running with Java Spring Boot Initializer. And, uh, and we started talking about HTML, but here we're going to dive deeply into what HTML is and when you're going to be using it in web development. So picking up from the last video, uh, you'll see that we have our application running currently. And right now we have it running on localhost 8080. And then we have it in a file called hello.html. So as I said, whatever uh, file exists here in this static folder, we will be able to get it by typing in that exact file by appending it to our to our server name. So here we have a pretty simple web page. We have my web page and we have a, a paragraph that says hello world. So I'm actually going to change this and I'm going to create something a little bit more elaborate, uh, something that represents the real world a little bit better. So typically in a body, we have these elements called section and sectioning elements. So sectioning elements allows us to be able to define what these parts are in our body. <clears throat> so for example, we might have a header. Uh, and then later on, we might have a main a main part of the application or a main part of our web page. And then maybe at the bottom, we have a footer. Now, all of these three, uh, these three tags that I've just listed here do not make any difference on a page. So if I save it and I just refresh this page, you'll see that it's blank because all I've done is actually section out three parts. I've actually given no content to these tags. Now, these are important because once again, for giving semantic meaning to our web page, this is very important, especially if you're dealing with things like uh, search, on, uh, search engine optimization or even giving more insight into the, uh, for the reader as to what your web page is about. It's very important that we include uh, uh, these tags that say exactly what we're doing in each part. So the first thing we have is the header. Let's say in the header, I have some kind of logo. I'm too lazy right now to create a logo, but we'll, we'll do logo here and then uh, we'll create a nav bar. So nav is another, another tag that we can use to, to signify what we're doing there. Uh, navigation is typically used for navigating between pages of your website. So I can have my nav bar. Uh, and let's say I have three navigations that I can go to. So for example, I might have a link that goes to um, I don't know, submit.html, and then uh, I can have a, actually, let's just do home.html. <laughs> Sounds a little bit better. So we'll do home.html, and then uh, from here, we can create a new file called home.html, right? And then uh, we can maybe create another navigation. So let's do another one here, do, do a VR tag, which is a line break, and A is an anchor tag. Uh, that goes to something else. I'll leave these blanks. Um, you know, you, hopefully you'll get the idea. So we have products, and then let's say we have another one. Oops. Um, and this is uh, the about page. Um, and you can imagine that we could have other stuff down here as well. Uh, and each one of them is going to uh, each reference to another file. Now these references can be to local files as well as uh, pages online. So we could even link this to something like sfu.ca, HTTPS. Uh, www.sfu.ca. So we can we can have something like that as well. Uh, so the next thing is our main, the main portion of our web page, right? So this is probably the one that contains the, the all of our information, all of the important information. So let's say in main is where we have our H1. Uh, this is our header text, right? And then perhaps in our underneath our uh, header text, we might have several sections, right? So I might have a section, uh, first section, and I might have another section down here, and and so on. So I might have uh, this, well, we'll just say this is our text for section one. And then we can also have text for section two. And furthermore, I can even label them uh, by giving certain attributes for this tag. So notice that we have an H uh, reference tag here, or sorry, H reference attribute here for the anchor tag. I can also create other uh, attributes for the section tag. One of them is called a class. So I can say this is a class and uh, maybe this is a section two, right? So this is something that I label as a section two. I can label this as, oh, maybe we should call it section one. And then we'll label this as section two. And so it gives further meaning to this particular tag. So to differentiate this section with this section, I'm going to call it a particular name. Okay, so a class is a, a classification. So meaning that I could actually have multiple uh, tags that are class section one. So for example, I could have uh, navigation, 
this navigation could be for section one as well. Now you might be wondering, what's the purpose of that? Well, what's the purpose of labeling something as a class? Uh, one of the advantages of this is that later we can actually apply a style to it. So for example, I can say everything that's labeled as section one, I'm going to color it as red, or I'm going to uh, apply a particular font to it, or I'm going to make it a particular size, right? So this is a way that we can identify certain elements on our page and be able to stylize them a little bit differently. Uh, but ultimately for programming later on, it's important because we can grab certain elements based on what their class is. Now, another thing that we can do is we can apply an ID. Now, an ID is exactly the same thing, right? Um, so, so this is the main part of our application. So I'm going to call it main part. And I'm going to apply an ID to the main part. The only difference between the, the class and the ID is an ID uniquely identifies the, applica uh, the, the, the element that's on a page. So I'll show you uh, how, uh, what that means in one second, but meaning that I cannot have an ID with the same name somewhere else. So I can't name the ID footer main part. Okay, so I'm not allowed to have that as an ID. Whereas a class, I can, I can call section one uh, that class in multiple elements. I can name multiple elements uh, class uh, section one. All right, so I hope that makes sense. Now for uh, the footer, maybe I'm just gonna add something like copyright. Bobby Chan 2023, and that's my web page. Okay, now there's a lot more things we can add to this. Uh, you can uh, take a look at the HTML reference for other things that we can do. Uh, in fact, I'm going to add a few more things in here as we go, but for now, let's just save this and take a look at what it looks like. I'm just going to refresh this page. Now, notice that my application is still running, so my server is still running. So I'm going to refresh this, and now we can see something like this. Oh, I forgot a BR tag over here. Let's do a BR tag here. And so you can see that we have our logo, we have our navigation, right? So clicking on certain parts of the navigation, notice we can navigate over. We can navigate over to sfe.ca if we click on this, right? And then there's other things that we can navigate to as well. We can build that out as we go. Here's the main part of our application where we have the header text and then we have the text for section one, we have the text for section two. And you'll notice that this is the the default way of representing our web page. Okay, now of course the default looks really ugly. So we haven't really talked about stylizing, what it means to stylize, what, what kind of things we can do to stylize our web page. So that's gonna come up in our uh, next tutorial on CSS. Uh, but for now, let's add a few more things. But before we do that, uh, I just wanna show you that we've added this ID called main part. So I'm not sure we can see it right now, but if we add a pound sign at the end of this and we type in main part, and we hit enter, this is going to automatically jump me to header text. So meaning that if we had a really long web page, right? So if we had a long web page uh, and we just went to uh, hashtag and main part, this is going to jump to this, the, the main part of our application, okay? Or our uh, web page. So of course here you can't see it because we're not really scrolling, but let's say we scrolled uh, out of the, the area and we navigate to this URL, it's gonna jump directly to the header text. Okay, so if you imagine a very long web page. All right, so that's another thing that ID is good for. It allows us to be able to fragment a page and allow us to be able to jump from part to part if we have lots of information on our web page. All right, so let's take a look at a few more tags uh, that are going to be quite important as we go forward in our, uh, in our discussion. So uh, one, kind of important tag is called a form tag. And a form tag is a way that we can interact with our uh, with our server to be able to give inputs into our server. So right now, you'll notice that our server is just really running, right? It's just, it's just uh, receiving uh, requests and it's statically sending back this, this web page, right? So there's no real interaction here. But what if there's a way for us as a user, as a client of this application, to be able to send some information to the server so that the server can process using that input? So the form is one way we can do this. So uh, the form has an action attribute associated with it. An action attribute typically says, where am I sending this information? Okay, so for example, I can send it to an endpoint called submit. I can send it to an endpoint called submit. And what it's going to do is it's going to say that when this form is done, when I'm done filling in this form, I'm going to send it over to the, the server and the server is going to send it to a 
endpoint called submit. Now we haven't really talked about endpoints yet in the, this tutorial, but just keep this in mind. Okay, so this action uh, allows us to be able to send the data that we have in our form over to something in the back end to the to the server. All right, the next thing is that uh, I'm just going to create a field set here. Uh, a field set uh, contains all of the the information of the uh, of the form. It's not a required uh, it's not it's not a required tag, but it allows us again to be able to keep uh, organized with um, uh, with with our HTML file. All right, I'm going to also create a legend. The legend is going to have a, uh, a kind of like uh, a heading for our form. So maybe this is our info, or perhaps if we want it as a login or something like that, uh, that we can call it a login, right? So so whatever whatever you're uh, getting the user to to enter, uh, that should typically go in your legend. And then we're going to create uh, the form. So I'm just going to start with a username, and then there's going to be an input tag. So one type of input is called text. So I'm going to leave it as text here, right? So this uh, text gives us a, a free form, uh, something to be able to to input uh, free form. Uh, in a later tutorial, I'll get a little bit more uh, into the details of what other inputs are available to us. But I'm just going to finish off with another type of input, and this type is called submit. Okay, and this is going to be a button. So um, the submit is going to have a value attribute to it, and the value is what is going to be displayed. So we'll say send. Okay, so if we go back into our file, if we do a refresh, you'll see that this is what we end up with. We have username, we have the text box, and then we have the send, or we have the, the submit button, which the value is send. So whatever we type in here, when we click the send button, this data is going to be sent over to our server to be processed under a uh, submit endpoint. Okay, so I'll say that one more time. So in this form called info, we're going to be able to enter this thing called username. And I, I think I should probably add one more thing here. Uh, we'll call it name, and then we'll call it uname. Okay, so uname is the variable that we're going to attach to whatever we type in to this text box. And then as soon as we hit send, we're going to send all of that information over to the server to an endpoint called submit. Notice that this form contains all of that information. Okay, So we'll, we'll leave this hanging for now, but keep this in mind, and this will be important for a later tutorial. All right, so whatever I type in here, so you'll notice that I, I can now give inputs to be sent over to the server. So this is a very important tool that we're going to be using a little bit later on. Another very important tool that we'll be using a little bit later on is the table. Now the table is typically used for displaying information. Okay, so how do we display information? So what a table is, it's kind of like a grid, right? So it has a bunch of columns and it has a bunch of rows and allows us to be able to display information. So the usefulness of a table is typically when we have some data on the database, we query a database or we try to grab some data, they're usually in the form of rows from a table. And uh, we're going to go into a little bit more detail about this as we get into databases, uh, our discussion on databases in a later tutorial. Uh, but for now, the structure of a table looks like this. We have a table tag, which indicates to HTML that I'm creating a table. There are table rows. So I can create as many table rows as I want, right? So for each uh, entry of the data, I guess, will be a different row. Right, so we have a bunch of table rows. And inside of those table rows, we could have table datas. Now, before we do the table datas, I want to talk about table headers. So table headers is basically what we're going to call the, the columns. So let's say the first one we call name, the second one we'll call age, and then the third one we'll call, hmm, what's what's in their attribute? Um, I don't know, uh, password. <laughs> Probably not going to display a password. Uh, of somebody, but but you'll get the idea. So then in our table rows, we can display the data. So let's say the, per the first person's name is Bobby, and then the second uh, age is 42, and then the password is um, password, something like that. Okay, so that's their password. And anyways, you get the idea that we can have uh, other people as well. We can create uh, other people, and this is basically how we show the data on HTML. Okay, so let me just very quickly um, finish off this table so we can have a look at this. So let's say we have a third person called Steve, and then we have the data um, there, 44, and then let's have another tated, uh, table data, which is the password. Their password is Steve, exclamation mark. All right, so we save this, 
<clears throat> and then we can take a look at this and you'll see that the table is displayed like this by default. So you'll, you'll see that by default, the table headers are in bold and then the table datas are displayed as just regular text. Now, as I said, this looks pretty bad right now, right? Uh, because it, it doesn't really gives us, give us any styling. It doesn't, um, it, it, it's not responsive as we change the size of the, uh, the, the browser. It doesn't give us any, any feedback or anything like that. Uh, so what we want to do is start thinking about ways that we can stylize our application. So can we add some colors to it? Can we change the defaults somehow, or can we, can we make it look a little bit more like our own? So that's what we want to do in the next uh, tutorial. Uh, but one thing I want, I want to do as a quick recap of what we're doing so far, everything that I've talked about in HTML. So uh, just for completion, let's create the, the home.html um, uh, file as well. So this is our home uh, page, right? And everything that we write in HTML, notice is for content only. Okay, so content only, meaning that the layout of the HTML file tells us this is the header. Okay, so this is the information that we're going to put in the header. The logo belongs to the header. The navigation belongs to the header, right? So all of these things give us the, the general structure, gives us the, the content of what's to be displayed. Now, by default, it's displayed like this, but ultimately, this tells us what the content is, right? It says nothing about how we're going to display it, right? How big it is, uh, what color is it, what font is it? it? It tells us none of that. So what we want to do in the next section is kind of separate those two concepts. So now that we have all the datas, right, we can display the datas, we, we have some forms that we can input and, and everything like that. Uh, can I be able to stylize this, to be able to add some, uh, uh, some colors or some sizes or to be able to alter certain attributes of how this thing is to be displayed while keeping the same data, okay? So I'm gonna stop the video here and what we're going to do is talk about CSS in our next topic.